Okay, so what would you do if somebody phoned in to your office with a job that you really, it's like a C or a D job, maybe even a B job, yeah. or a silver or bronze job? What would you say to them? Okay, so if the first thing <clears throat> I want to check is, is it within my niche? So I, I want to qualify the job because if it was, put it this way, if it was a job that might be a little bit more tricky to, to find, however, if I knew I had exclusivity, I would definitely be able to find that type of candidate. Then <clears throat> I would question the client about the role, question the client about what have they done so far to fill the role. So I'd want to find out where they were at in the recruitment process. I'd want to find out um, which other agencies they were using, how committed they were to making a decision. So what are the time frames to the role? So how quickly do they want it filled and why do they want it filled that quickly? How committed are they? <clears throat> and fu fundamentally, I'd question the client. And if um, I'd, I'd still create the need for the client, if they wanted me to work it, then I would present that as it's a retained assignment no matter what the level of the role is. <clears throat> but what happens if it's they are paying 10% fees, it's not in a niche? Well, I um, wouldn't work it if it was a 10% fees. So, so what, how would you tell them that you weren't going to work it nicely? Um, <clears throat> okay, so in a really nice way, I, I would explain that on a contingent basis, we work with c clients and we work with our clients who are committed. So whilst we don't ask the client necessarily to pay us a retainer up front, what we do ask for is commitment on the role so that we can actually prioritise that role for the client and make sure that it's a role that we're going to be able to support them in filling because there's no point in us taking a job on if we're not even going to work it. Uh -huh. So that's actually a waste of time for the client and, and not good for our brand. So I would want to qualify with the client um, in terms of where they're at with the role and then I would explain that um, you know, unfortunately, Mr. Client, we work with committed clients. These are the levels of commitment that you need to give us. This is the fee that you would need to give us. And unfortunately, if it doesn't meet that criteria, then at this stage, we wouldn't be able to help you in filling that role. But, you know, wish you all the very best. Um, and, um, yeah, and, and, and just explain that for this one particular role, that wouldn't be the case. In case you want to leave the doors open, because then may, the client might want to come back and actually say, well, Okay, if that's the case, what do I need to be to be committed? What do I need to do to make to help you to be able to support me in filling that role? And would you say to them anything like if it doesn't work with these other agencies, you know, please reconnect with me and how I do you would definitely them? explain what the criteria would need to be for me to be able to work it with them. Yes. Yeah. So and and I would lay that out in terms of what term, you know, what the minimum fee would need to be, the levels of commitment. So I would explain in <coughs> in brief how the process would work with me. So what my service level would be, what I would give them for that, so that they understand why I'd need that commitment back. What do they get in return for that commitment, and for working that fee level? And I would um, explain how quickly I'd be able to achieve it for them, and therefore where I'm saving them money rather than actually costing them money. Yeah. And then the, the, the choice is theirs as to whether yeah. they change um, or that they want to work in that way. And this this would be after you've taken as much of a full brief as you can extract so, from them. Yeah, so, uh, okay, I, I there's key things that I think that you need to find out. And one of the things that I don't think... So what I want to find out is, why is the role um, open? So what's the purpose of the role? What's the, the, the value of that role within the business? Um, why is that important to them as a business? So what happens if that role isn't there being fulfilled? What's the impact on the business? What have they done thus far to fill that role? What have they used in the past? And why is that the method that they believe the, to be the right method? And if that isn't the right method, what are their other choices? Um, what have they done to date to fill that role? So what I'm actually looking for, if I think of a funnel effect, is I'm getting, I'm creating an understanding with the client as to how important that role is within the business. So I want them to feel the pressure of understanding actually what's the impact to me in my role and my business if I haven't got that fulfilled. Because often the client doesn't actually realise what that is. So that's the first thing I'm going to help them to do, is to understand what, what the impact is. Then I'm going to find out what they've done today and how well that is performing for them. Because again, often they don't understand that actually 
what might be happening for them isn't a successful recruitment process. Um, and, and then the next stage would be, so what have I done today? Where am I at in the process? And then what are the other options to me? So I'm, I'm basically transitioning th them through an, a sort of consultation, which gets them to have a better understanding of what's actually going on for them, rather than I've got, I've got a hole, I've got a vacancy. And that's often how the client perceives it at that point. They don't really understand what impact it's having on them because they don't know what they don't know, so they wouldn't know the question. So I'm supporting the client, so I'm giving them a consultation, even if I'm not working the job, so that they get real value from that. Great. And that's where by following the process, following the questions, following the those on a totally. script, whatever, is absolutely crucial. Totally, yeah, it's, it's definitely scripted. So, you know, <clears throat> I would teach a consultant to start, I call it a funnel effect, to start at this point, these are the key questions you need to ask at that point. Now you move the client, transition them to this point. Now you move the client, transition them to this point. So the client at the end of that process is thinking, okay, that was a really good experience. That was really valuable for me. Even if this person doesn't, you know, isn't prepared to work the job for me, wow, imagine if they worked the job for me and what value I would get then. And secondly, you, you, you're serving your client because you're helping them anyway. So that the, yeah, they're only getting a great experience from you and it means that they will definitely come back. Yeah. And those questions are, by the way, um, within the Gold Jobs Game Changer, there's a yeah. ton of them. You just need to, to pick out which ones are relevant for your business. Absolutely. So that's that's exactly what's it, yeah what's in that Game Changer and what, what we would teach people. And, and, and the funnel process is really simple to, to do as well. They're... They're obvious questions, but the sequence in which you ask them is important. Um, which is why I don't then, at that point, I wouldn't even be getting into the job brief, because you don't need to know about the job brief. That's detail that would only come if you decided you were going to work the job. Great. And actually what most people do is they do it the wrong way around, which is they get into the job brief and start questioning about the job brief when they haven't identified the need for the client so it's no wonder that a client then doesn't really understand why they would need to use that agency brilliant thank you very much katie